Hi Flip family, welcome to my channel. I am Carissa and if you are new, and I guess since this is my first video, everybody's new, go ahead and click subscribe and also the notification bell so when I upload new videos, you will be notified. So the plan for this channel is pretty simple. Um, I will be attempting to upload two videos a week. One will be a haul and one will be a DIY crafty goodness uh, type video. So my um, passion is upcycling or maybe you call it recycling, maybe you call it uh, creative do-overs, maybe you call it, um, I don't know, uh, thrifting, treasure hunting. Um, so some of my hauls will be from thrift stores and some of them will be from Dollar Tree because you can find some really cool things to redo at Dollar Tree and the price is right. So today I'm going to share a partial haul from the Goodwill bins. Now if you have been to the Goodwill bins you know that it is super easy to leave with an entire shopping cart full of uh, goodness and usually you are paying not very much per item depending on how much it weighs of course. So I'm not sharing the entire shopping cart I am just sharing um, a box that came from there and some of the things and then we'll also be talking about what I might do with the items to upcycle them in a creative way. And right now I am gathering quite a bit of uh, upcycle material because I am hoping that sometime in 2021, I will be able to open my shop, which is called Flip, and uh, be able to sell all these amazing things that we do. So without further ado, here is the haul. So I have this box and I will lift it up in just a minute. Um, the box itself is a tray, which is super cool. But if you have not been to the Goodwill bins, it's kind of a warehouse style situation and you dig through all of these huge rolling bins of mixed merchandise. And uh, sometimes you find good stuff and sometimes you don't. Um, it's kind of interesting. I usually go with my mom. We'll go through the same bins. She'll pull out what she wants and I go through and pull out completely different stuff. So that makes it kind of fun. So one of the things that I found was this set of little plates probably uh, had a set of teacups that went with it at some point, but they don't anymore. They are black and white, super graphic. And when I originally purchased these, I was thinking that they could make a really cute sign for a kitchen um, to like hang up with plant, uh, plant hangers, plate hangers, and then put letters in the center to spell out something, um, you know, eat or food or kitchen or wait I don't have enough for kitchen but you know what I mean so I really liked that they were simple that they're all black and white they're all different and very graphic and I think they would be super cool like that like I said to put a letter in the center using either a Cricut or letter stickers from the Dollar Tree or even hand lettering with a sharpie all right, and then of course one of my favorite things to get at the bins is picture frames. I usually see them as blank slates for upcycling. This one would be great. It's not bad as it is, but it would be great painted. This is a tabletop one, but it also has a hanger. The glass is intact, which is hit or miss at the bins. Um, but I liked that it had this inlaid area, which would make it perfect for collaging something in there. Um, or adding details like dominoes uh, to make a frame for a game room would be super cute. I found this set of bottles. Wait, this way. <laughs> so we got hope, we have faith, and we have love. I thought those were really cool. Again, they're neat the way they are, and I probably could use them exactly the way they are, just add some florals to them. Um, or I may paint them so that they're all the same, perhaps with a white chalk paint or an ivory chalk paint. Um, and then distressing them, of course, to bring out the letters and also the distressing that's already on the containers. Okay, but I was able to find three of those. I found this rather 
stiff uh, doily. I use these a lot for adding texture to either art journals or um, collage pieces. You know, you don't have to use the whole thing. Um, if you use hot glue or Mod Podge or Fray Check, it will keep it from unraveling any further. But this one already seems to have some sort of a stiffener in it, so it probably could be cut up and not have any issues whatsoever. It would also be very cool to use this with a large um, embroidery hoop and make a dream catcher out of it. So that's another possibility with that. I found a set of mirrors. <laughs> so it came with, what well, didn't come with, I found um, four of them. And they are stuck to, these two are not, but these two are stuck together. And so that's going to take a probably a little bit of prying to get those loose. They do have a hanger on the back. Um, but again, these are just like blank slates, something that you can embellish or paint to freshen up a little bit. There's nothing wrong with them the way they are. But if you're an avid upcycler like myself, then you know you're always on the lookout for something that can be embellished or changed out a little bit. I also found these two, oops, sorry, this way, <laughs> these two little frames like this, and they do have the wall hanger on the back. These were for sale at Goodwill for $3.99 each. They didn't sell, they ended up at the bins, and they don't weigh very much, so I probably paid less than a dollar a piece for them. But what's kind of cute is it's very country looking. Um, I think they'd be cute lightened up with a lighter chalk paint and then distressed, but then if you hang them, they have to have this little shelf area. So if you had some little, these are too big, but if you had some little tiny bottles, then you could kind of create this whole display, which would be kind of fun. Or if you want to do it the other way, this is how I had them sitting in the box. You could set them on a shelf this way and do a display. So they don't have to be a wall hanger. You could flip them on their head. So that's kind of a fun find. Got this very rustic piece. The original on this also was $3.99. Again, I probably paid less than a dollar for it at the bins. It's very secure. It is just screaming for some burlap ribbon bow and some really cute florals. Fun, fun, fun. I found this super cool, almost like a camping type um, outdoor, outdoor cup. It has the original tag on it, but it doesn't have a price on it. It's huge. It's like as, not as big as my head, but it's close. It's big. Um, but I wasn't thinking of this as a cup. I was thinking of this as a planter for like succulents. I thought it would be really fun. So I got that. I found this roll of fabric, fabric strips. And I just thought this was kind of cool. Even if you use the back side to get a more subtle look, I was originally thinking I had seen this used to wrap um, hangers, like um, the thick plastic hangers that are kind of ugly, but they work um, to give it a little bit of a decorative element. But then I've also seen this used to wrap um, decorative balls. Like you can get the wiffle balls at Dollar Tree, or you can get the... Um, styrofoam balls at the craft store, either one, or you can find a ball of some sort uh, on one of your treasure hunts. Um, but they wrap up the balls in different fabrics and then um, display them in a bowl or a basket or a apothecary jar. <laughs> I can talk, I promise. Um, so I found that. And I like that it's really neutral. You could definitely paint over this or stain it. Um, and like I said, the front is neutral. It's ivory and tan, almost an olive -y kind of color. Um, but the back also could work for that as well. And then I found this welcome sign, obviously designed for Valentine's Day. Again, it's cute as it is, but it could also be redone so that it could be a farmhouse or country style welcome sign for year round. I feel like if it was all one color, um, perhaps gray or again, ivory, um, that it would be something that could stay up all year round and be a really cute little welcome sign. 
And then I also found some little embellishments. Sometimes it is so random what you find. And again, these can be used for collage. They can be used for planning. Um, they can be used for uh, scrapbooking. So many different options. And in that same vein, we have a bag of ephemera. I believe these are Tim Holtz. That's what they remind me of. And my daughter had just purchased some at the craft store. Um, and so they very much remind me of that. And again, these are great for um, art journaling, for collages, for scrapbooking, um, all kinds of, of art projects. And they're just vintage black and white photos of people but I love the, the fashion. You can even do an art piece where you just frame the people if you like that, that history, like maybe on top of a, a dictionary page that's been antiqued or a piece of a map. Um, I also collect, anytime I am out and about treasure hunting, anything that is cube shaped. And the reason I do that is because they are so versatile. You can, you know, I could stack these, paint them, turn it into a snowman, um, I could uh, paint them, put an X and O, and it becomes a tiered tray cutie. You know, so anything cube shaped that I find, I generally pick up because I know that I will find 101 uses for them. Um, blocks are great, dice are great, decorative cubes are great. This is some sort of a fidget type situation. They're cubes, they're attached by an elastic band and you can manipulate them and it's obviously promotional material for something because it does have phone numbers and other information on the cubes but again I collect cube size things um, this would be really cute to make a stack of um, blocks put a word on it and again use it on a tiered tray um, or on one of those little shelves you could do a word across here or do it this way if you end up putting the frame this way and uh, do a little word like family, um, love, hope, wish, you know, any of those words that we like to use in our projects. I found this really cute, uh, got a little bit bent. That's probably my fault. Um, this really cute hanger. Again, it's, it needs some love. A lot of things you find at the bins need some love, but the main thing I bought this for was for these little flowers. Cause I knew that I would be able to take these off very easily. They're just wired on and use them in other projects and then maybe do something with the hook as well. But again, like I said, it needs a little bit of love. It's a little bit dinged up. The bird's actually really cool too. Um, and it would be fun to paint that. I found this pack of napkins. And what's cool about these is that they have a very vintage look to them. And I have been doing some projects decoupaging with paper napkins. And they come out super cool. So very exciting um, to find those. Originally, 99 cents. If they don't weigh anything, I probably paid a quarter for them. In the vein of embellishments, I also found some random lace. Again, what you find in the bins can be super random. You just have to be really open-minded. But this is beautiful lace. There's actually quite a bit of it. Looks like almost about two yards. So I got about two yards of this really pretty lace. This is great for art journaling, great for collage, um, scrapbooking, um, crafting just in general. I mean, if I was going to make... Um, gnomes that could be used as embellishment for that or make santas or make snowmen or angels any of those things would be great with lace like this and probably with the weight a nickel you know that's the thing that's really cool and um, this is a little christmas ornament that's not what i bought it as i bought it to use as an embellishment for something perhaps taking the tie off because it's got a hanger uh, take the hanger off and put it in a shadow box would be really cool. It has kind of an iridescent finish to it that is really pretty. And let's see, I found this jewelry piece. Again, another textural embell embellishment. Uh, this would also be kind of cool in a shadow box. One of those shadow boxes with multiple openings that you just put kind of little treasures in. This could be kind of cool for that. Um, I found this bag of it has assorted knobs and handles. 
This is great for if you need um, a handle to do like for the top of jars, if you're redoing jars into like mason jars into apothecary type jars, or if you need little knobs for the front of a cabinet um, piece that will hold jewelry and things like that. Let's see. And then I found this tray. There's a little bead rolling around in there. This tray has really nice leather handles. It has um, a particle, particle board? particle board base, which is just screaming out for decoupage or paint or, or um, mosaic, something really cool. And the um, wicker part of it, and or the wood part of it, is in really, really good shape. I gotta get that bead out of here, it's driving me crazy. Uh, it's in really, really good shape. So, um, and it says it was made for a Pyrex brand. So it was designed to hold one of those glass Pyrex dishes so that you don't burn the heck out of your hands. But it's going to be a great tray once it's um, all finished up. And it's, you know, like I said, really super good condition. I found these funky little earrings that are like little glass butterflies. Again, I'm thinking embellishments for something else. You know, piece for for a tear tray or whatever. I found these two tins. Now, originally, I was going to open a shop space inside what used to be a grocery store in like the 20s and 30s, and so I was looking for tins that um, were food related so that I could use them to hold like office supplies at the cash check um, cashier uh, check stand. There we go. I knew I would get it. So I did find a couple of tins. This one is for ginger lemon green tea and this one is for pumpkin spice now I'm not going to do that so I may repurpose these into some sort of a cool flower arrangement type situation to resell at the shop I also got these little it's a bag of magnets so these are obviously for like a chore or reward board um, cause they have, you know, looking good, uh, way to go. You did it. Super. They're all, you know, awesome. They're all like little encouraging magnets, but basically it's just a flat surface. So if I wanted to make, um, my own magnets, all I have to do is collage something onto the front. Um, or they can be used as circles. If I need, um, circle dimension, like to, put underneath another piece to give it lift or if I'm doing like the center of a flower and I just want a circle that's raised those will work for that as well glue them on paint them up good to go and then I also one of the other things that I buy quite a bit um, thrift stores is game pieces um, dominoes is one of the things that I buy scrabble tiles I always pick up anything with letters on it um, backgammon pieces also are kind of like the little magnet pieces in that, you know, it's a circle uh, that could be used for a lot of different things. So I did get a few dominoes. Problem with those at the bins is usually they're not in the box. They're scattered throughout bins, sometimes multiple bins. And so it takes a little bit to find them. And then the last thing, of course, is the tray that they were sitting in and it's, oh, it's big, it's heavy. So this was probably the most expensive item I bought in that particular haul because it is heavy. I probably paid, I don't know, four or five dollars for it, which, you know, is not bad for a tray this size. It's got really great hardware on each end. It's painted black. It is distressed. It's basically a blank canvas for mosaics or collage or paint on the inside as well to make it a real um, showpiece. But it would be great in a living room on top of an ottoman or coffee table um, or in a kitchen as part of a coffee bar. But it is a big piece. Um, and so that is our first haul for Flip. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and also hit the notification bell. So when I upload a new video, you will get the notification and I will talk to you soon. Bye Flip family.